Hello, look, I'm in the outside. Yes, I've braved the zombie apocalypse. I've walked an hour through the woods to come here and I'm really glad because I thought the developers might have encroached on this side. They're still over there. So at the moment, I've still got the secret field. Why am I here? Just to follow up on some stuff. I'm here with a little sector 132. If you remember this, I tried it around the garden and in the house and it looked a bit different then. I had the prop guards on and I had the 2.5 inch props. I've taken those off, I've put the 3 inch props on, I've got a bigger battery on, this is an 850 milliamp hour 4S and I've got a little uh, lost model beeper just in case and of course got the Tazi on. I've got it as well because it's very sunny, absolutely gorgeous, I've got an ND8 filter on the Tazi, see if that cuts down on the wobbles. I don't know if this is going to be a ripper but um, certainly it should be much more acrobatic than sort of flying it around at home and obviously I've upped the rates as well so let's give it a go and see what happens. Okay so up we go for the FPV Maiden and first things first it sort of feels pretty nice pretty smooth quite happy with it. I did notice just in the FPV camera you can kind of see just on the extents of the corners you can just catch sight of the ND8 filter. I was a little bit worried this might show up on the HD footage as well, which I'll get to later, but fortunately it doesn't. The FPV camera in the Tarsier is much more wide angled than the actual HD camera, so you get a, a lot more there. Now I did notice that it, it wasn't instantly powerful. If you if you blip the throttle, it didn't go up as fast as many, and I found this out because I sort of came down and then I blipped the throttle and not quick enough. So again, just before getting into the HD footage, another thing I wanted to check out is how good the VTX was. As you can see, I've got it, I'm in race band channel one and I'm in 25 milliwatts at the moment. So I wanted to take it across to the end of the field to see how it felt um, and how noisy the picture got or did we get any static or anything like that. And I'm being quite gentle because this is the first time I've used a Jumper T12 Pro going out to this distance. So I'm keeping a good eye on the RSSI and I'm, I'm coming up quite high at the moment. The end of the field here just over 500 meters and in 25 milliwatts you can see we're getting a little bit of noise. Um, it's not quite into the what you'd call the static, it's just noise at the moment, but it, it's perfectly flyable. So I thought what I'd do, I'd come back, albeit via this little uh, structure there, and I'll, I'll change up to 200 milliwatts and see what difference that made. So quick reminder, this is on the Tramp protocol rather than the Smart Audio, but uh, easy to change in all the same way. So I'm just going on to 200 here before taking off. And off we go to do that same little flight, or this time in 200 milliwatts. You can see there's a little bit of noise generally in the display, those kind of slight interference lines. It's not something I really picked up in the goggles when I was flying. And I'm a, a lot more confident about flying this route the second time because, of course, after you do it the first time, you're like, yep, that's safe and uh, happier. So I'm coming down a little bit lower here. Um, perfectly fine. And you can see in 200 milliwatts, the noise is much less. We've got um, practically no breakup, just maybe a little bit. Um, that's half-half between, is that, you know, the camera slightly oversaturating or is it static? Now, we're zipping along reasonably fast although I should say at this point that power thing it's it's not something that is a real speed demon like some of the three inch quads really do go and this thing isn't quite that thing but let's talk about the HD footage we're getting whilst we're flying this now I've kept the OSD picture from the DVR there as well because it's a good illustration of how the angles of the cameras are slightly different. So the HD lens on this configuration is on top. And sometimes that means when you're looking at stuff on the ground, you will miss stuff. And you'll see just as I come past myself, I'm sort of nicely in shot um, in the DVR, but then I sort of disappear out of the HD footage occasionally. Uh, but the actual footage you get here is, is really nice. The colors are a lot truer there's a slight oversaturation on the greens and reds in the DVR footage, although it doesn't particularly bother me. We do have some sort of general lumps and bumps as we're flying around. We're talking about a very lightweight quad. I do notice we don't seem to be getting jello as such. It's more of a sort of vibration thing we're getting and we're picking up obviously wobbles from the wind um, and just generally the quad itself. One thing about this quad, aside from the fact um, if you hit that 100% throttle, 
it's not all that powerful. I mean, it's pretty good. It's, it's a nice fly, but it's just not like a rocket ship. If it descends for its own prop wash, it really doesn't like that. It really has a point of view about it. But one thing I liked about this Tarsier camera for the FPV camera is, um, and I, I flew around this on a different camera as well, when it goes into shadow and stuff, it, it handles the light really quite well. It's really a, a pretty good little FPV camera I'm finding. So flying in and out of shadow, um, not really a problem. I'm able to pick up stuff quite reasonably. Um, and this is a place where some cameras really do sort of struggle at that. But uh, this is this is doing quite well. Just going up a bit higher here just to see how the layer of the land looking. As you see, I'm, I'm catching more vibrations from the additional wind here. And this is another good illustration of where you're trying to line up stuff in your FPV image. It's not quite lining up the same as your HD footage. It's a much better idea if you can to put the HD recording lens at the bottom. And then because the FPV lens is wider, it kind of catches what you'd get, at least at the, the bottom of the screen. That said, it's it's not the end of the, the world. I'd much prefer to have a decent FPV lens rather than fly through the HD lens, which is often awful. Just coming in here for a landing, and that grass is so tall that um, I'm struggling to actually pick out my landing mat. It's, it's there somewhere, but we're not gonna be able to come in and actually see it very obviously. It's just a case of sort of get roughly there and sort of drop down and we're good. So I put four batteries for it in the field using the uh, 854S's, which felt about right. And on this last battery, I, I messed around a little bit more, tried to get a little bit more acrobatic with it. As said, it's a good all round flyer. It doesn't particularly excel at doing sort of fast acro stuff because um, it lacks that real top end uh, sort of rocket ship type power. So up to about 70% throttle it's good, but it doesn't seem to have that much more oomph afterwards. As far as this quad goes though, what I've mentioned about it before, and I'll say it again, it's the versatility I like. The fact that this came as a two and a half inch uh, quad with prop guards on, and basically I swapped it out to be a three inch flyer, uh, is, is quite interesting for me. And I mean, it's not something that's trivial you do in the field. It's about 10 minutes because, you know, there's a whole bunch of screws to do and, and tighten back up again and, and change things around. But that said, I haven't finished with it either. I've enjoyed flying it as a sort of all round cruisy quad that's sort of fun to fly and you get the benefit of HD footage. But what I'm gonna do next is swap the props back over to two and a half inch props, um, put the prop guards back on just so I can go and take it through the woods and not have to worry too much about, you know, bumping into the odd ghost branch or, or bigger branch or just tree trunks generally. Um, so yeah, I've enjoyed it, as I said, it is, I, I, I don't really want to use the, the, the phrase jack of all trades, master of none, because it sort of puts the quad down a bit. But, you know, it, it's true to a certain extent. This is not the very best Cine Whoop you will find, nor is it the sort of fastest or more powerful three inch flyer. It's, it's sacrificed certain things to be versatile enough to do both things quite well. So you'd have many more three inch quads um, that I would suggest you buy if you want to go all out acro and power. And similarly, there's probably better cine whoops around which you could use, and that would be much better. But as an all rounder and a fun to fly quad, this, is, this has been really nice. And I haven't done anything to it out of the box. I've just messed with my rates uh, slightly. So I've had very gentle rates for flying in the garden and sort of more aggressive rates here as, as I'm sort of doing more acro stuff. But there you go, I, I was really glad to fly this out again and, uh, and mess around with it outside the garden. And uh, as I said, I'll be back to do some more stuff with it. Um, and as before, th this was supplied for review by HDLRC, so thanks very much to them. And you'll find links once again below where you can check this out in more detail. And uh, yeah, there's all sorts of different variations of the Sector 132, including a, a DJI one, which is cool for people if you've already got the goggles and stuff. Anyway, hope that's helpful and I'll be back soon with some more stuff. Catch you later. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.